I've had comments from teammates, I've had comments from fans, like, you know, we're looking forward to this Muslim footballer throwing bombs down the wing and things like this. Um, some of it's one-on-one, -on -one, some of it's social media. Um, but, you know, racism and Islamophobia is like cancer because it can eat, eat away with you from the inside and it's not something you can touch or feel. It's something that, it's like fighting ghosts sometimes because you can't see it. Unfortunately, I have to agree with that. And uh, actually, we need to see it a little bit wider than football. It's a fact we live in a time of Islamophobia. And, uh, and that Islamophobia, it's, it's reflecting as well onto football pitches and to the grassroots. Premier League or Championship, I've never heard you know, on that level. It's more racism issues, but on the grassroots level, I mean, in London here, uh, it's very multicultural anyways. I mean, you grew up with uh, uh, kids from different cultures and you get a kind of used to that. But if you get outside London, uh, which is not really anymore that diversity, there you hear it more. If football clubs going there to play, they face more of these kind of issues. As a young boy growing up, you know, especially in the UK, it's every boy's dream to become a professional footballer. I, I did pretty well in school, but again, it was very interesting because my mum would turn up to a football club and um, just a normal amateur club, and they would say, sorry, we're full. So even though my mum was willing to pay for me to play, they were like, no, sorry, we, we, you know, we've got too many, we've got too many kids. But yet she found out that other parents from different backgrounds, they were taking those kids. So, you know, again, parents facing that blockage is, it, it, again, at grassroots level is, is, a, is, a, is an issue. But my mom, she found other ways to do so. She found another club that would take me. And from then on, my, my, my journey in football began. And Alhamdulillah, I was lucky that at a young age, I got scouted and I went through the system. But I, I took a bit of a, a different approach. I decided to leave UK because I was really disheartened by some of the issues that I would face when I'd go into, um, you know, the local village you know not only am i the only muslim person but i'm the only south asian person people would look at me like very differently so i thought and this could be really disheartening for a young kid at a young age and that could draw, that could have ultimately just finished my career and, and my dream of becoming a footballer but i decided to then leave uk and go to the usa and that really opened my eyes to the world when i went over there what was interesting they didn't think i was a muslim south asian they thought i was mexican so suddenly they thought, there's a South American footballer and he must be amazing. So that's, it's interesting how perceptions in the world work. Over here, I was a, a minority Muslim South Asian footballer. Maybe he's good, maybe he's not, you know. But I go to America and suddenly they think I'm South American, they think I'm amazing. I'm the same person. It's in the brain. I mean, we have to, again, we have to look back, you know. This is, a, this is in making for the last 20 years. It's not today. It didn't come into their people's minds today. It didn't come out suddenly. And it wasn't a making not just through politics, it wasn't a making through mainstream media. We live in a time of Islamophobia and unfortunately it's becoming a, a, even a bigger problem every day because as I said before, it's a negative thing. And, and it's built up into the society. Whatever is put together with Islam, it's felt like it's negative, it's dark, it's bad, it's terrorist. And in the grassroots, we have that there as well. They're, they, ins uh, they insult these kids with calling them terrorists or you are Muslima, you are, you know, you will you will have uh, wearing a bomb around you. They do these jokes, you know, but these jokes are more than jokes. I feel sometimes I have to um, apologize kind of when things happen, people asking me, why this happened over there? Why this terror? So I said, look, this has nothing to do with Islam. And we always have to explain people, which actually the government should do or the education should do. It's not my job to explain. And I'm saying, first of all, these people are not representing us. So, and uh, Islam doesn't allow to kill someone else. So, but it's difficult. And because people have already, they have this perception because uh, if you read it, if you see it in the newspaper, in the media, in, in the society, again and again, it becomes a fear. Um, and in my opinion, I think one incident is far too many. Um, whilst the negativity spreads, 
um, we must try and be faster and quicker and collectively work together to eradicate Islamophobia. I'm sometimes thinking, is it the job of the football association to tackle these things? Yes, partially. Partially they have to do something, I agree. But mainly it's an educational problem, right? And it starts early, it starts at school. It doesn't start at the uh, football pitch. Where the football pitch or the grassroots place, it's where it's reflected in the end. But the cause of the problem, it, it doesn't actually start there. It starts at home and it starts at school. And these are the areas where people need to get taught about that. People need to understand what is Islamophobia? We even haven't in this country, in England, in this developed country, we don't have a definition for Islamophobia and the politicians can't make it and, and don't do it. And I don't know why they don't make it. If you don't know what the problem really is, you can't tackle it, you can't address it. When I left the UK and I went to America, it was actually around just after 9-11. And interestingly enough, me being a, a footballer with a British accent, it didn't matter if I was Muslim or not. I was, I was kind of accepted in society. Whereas some of the Arab people over there who didn't have no sports background, nothing like that, they were kind of started to be isolated already. And I feel unfortunately 9-11 has really changed the way the world sees Islam. The normal perception is now very negative and it's got a negative connotation, you know, with Muslims and Islam in general. But again, as you mentioned that, I don't think this is a football issue, it's a cultural and societal issue. Um, and I think it's so, so imperative that the world starts to see Islam from a different lens. I think this is the only way that we can broaden the viewpoint and help grassroots and ultimately help football. We need more examples. We need more Mohamed Salahs. We need more Mesut Ozil's to, uh, to open up. But they're, they're just an exception. The majority can't make it even to become a professional athlete because there's not enough support, right? This is true and in fact as well because small things make the difference. If they were also supported by coaches, by the football federations, by the club a little bit more, then we would have today more British Asians actually in football. But I always argue the fact that why do I have to be a South Asian footballer? Why do I have to be a Muslim footballer? I'm just a footballer. And I think that is something that I keep trying to fight. And, and I think until we can create an equal playing field across the board, I think we'll always have these issues. These are facts, you know, things that we have to face. And, and the only way to do it is build more confidence in our children, make them more um, stronger in, in their own self-belief and in their faith. I think recommending improvements in, the, in this as a holistic, I just feel that we have an amazing opportunity to use the lens of football um, to unlock its potential. Because as mentioned, you know, football touches 3.5 billion people across the world. And we can really use that to build more resilient communities for all faiths. And I feel football especially is, you know, got this special power to transcend and bring communities together. Um, but I also understand, I say that, Sport isn't a magical one, neither is football, but it can definitely be a tool for communication beyond the norm and especially against the anti-Muslim sentiment.